Okay, guys, I always have people messaging me and asking me, you know, oh, I've never backpacked before. Like, what do I pack for a backpack or what do I do? So I am not an expert. I'm still learning, but I figured I'd give a quick little example of what I do before I go on a big backpacking trip in case it helps you. Um, this one's a little bit different because some backpacking trips are in the woods or in alpine areas um, or, you know, just different environments. This one is a canyon hike. It's a slot canyon hike and it's going to be pretty hot sometimes, pretty cold sometimes. It's going to be very wet like the whole time. So I have a lot of waterproof stuff. Um, there's still some things that I haven't taken out and I did that on purpose to kind of show you my process of elimination. Um, this is after like three times of a process of elimination where like I pull everything that I have from my camping gear and then I go through it and I decide what I need for this actual trip and what's important because weight is always a consideration. So you want to make sure you make your pack as light as possible, but make sure you take everything that you need with you. Um, so the first thing that I can uh, take out of the pile basically of what I set out, this is like my final um, go through where I'm like, this is pretty much everything I want. I don't want to take anything out. I pretty much need everything that's in this pile or I want everything that's in this pile that I'm willing to carry the weight of. The one thing I can take out, which is a really big deal is if you're going on a trip, um, and you get a book, um, say it's a backpacking tips book or it's a book on where you're going. Um, it's really heavy. So really, really heavy, lots of weight. Um, a suggestion a lot of people make is to rip out the pages of what you want like what hike you're doing or what trail you're doing or um, advice on the hike or the place that you're going and then leave the book and then as you're going if there's fires permitted burn the pages and that takes away even more weight um, what I decided to do because I want to keep this I wanted to keep the pages I didn't want to rip them out and then lose them or burn them I um, ripped the pages out and I photocopied them so I could get rid of this book um, this one is just a really good book I suggested to anybody who's learning to backpack or hiking I think I've mentioned this before in some of my videos or pictures. I got this from a doctor friend and it has saved my life. Literally, it gives really good advice on how to survive every environment, climate, temperature, whatever you're doing. It even gives you really cool ideas of how to make multi-purpose uh, um, containers or uh, tools that you need that are lightweight and multi-purpose. So anyway, um, so I didn't photocopy any of this because I've read a bunch of times and I know what's in it. I just want to show you guys that and so I can get rid of that. So automatically, I just lost a ton of weight. So that's gone. Um, what I did with the photocopied pages is I put them in this airtight, um, waterproof bag. You can get these from REI or Cabela's or, you know, any type of camping store. Um, you can even use something as simple as a Ziploc bag, like a freezer Ziploc bag. Um, I just have these and I think they're really good quality, so I like them. So it has, oh, sorry, that kind of came out of focus. It has my maps in it, so I'll, uh, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I don't know how to do this while I'm talking to you. Let's see. Okay, so it has um, a list of things that I need to do, you know, the first day when I'm picking up my friend and permits, um, receipts and stuff for hotels, and directions to our trail site and everything. So this first top section, I can literally get rid of once we start the hike. Then there's my maps. So I have a bunch of pages from the book that are the maps of the hike. They give tips on where to go, your trail, you know, emergency stuff. And then I have some tips, of, like info about the hike and some history and some really cool, fun stuff. That's super light. So that can stay in there and that'll be waterproof. I'll get rid of all this stuff, you know, once we actually get to the trail, I'll just like leave it in my car. So that's that. Um, okay, and then I have a whole other pile of waterproof bags. I have one for my phone. That one's gonna be really important because if I wanna put my phone in my pocket, there's gonna be times in the canyon. Oh, and I'm sorry, I didn't even say it. This, this hike that I'm prepping for is for Buckskin Gulch and Perea Canyon. So sand hiking, wet mud, um, trudging through whether it could be ankle, calf, knee, high, uh, hip high water. So I just want everything to be waterproof. So this is a really good waterproof cell phone holder. Um, and then I have regular Ziploc bags and I have these, they're called Mayo stand bags. We use them in the operating room, but it's just basically like an industrial like garbage bag. Um, and those are going to be things that I'm going to use to put my food garbage in, um, to put dirty clothes in, um, to even actually put my other bags inside of them to keep them even more dry because I just want everything to stay dry. So that's really important. Um, and then I have my electronics. So I have, haha, don't make fun of me, I know, selfie stick, but it's it's really nice sometimes if you want to take a good picture and no one's around. Um, I have a little tripod in there for your cell phone so you can hook that up and then that way me and my girlfriend can take some fun pictures together. Um, external batteries or chargers, those are very important. Um, even if you put your phone on airplane mode and you're on a long backpacking trip, you waste your battery. So taking pictures, video, things like that. So it's important for me to have the extra charger. 
Um, okay, so the other thing that I'm probably going to get rid of, um, I think it's really cool and I really want to bring it. Um, I finally got one of those hammocks, um, like a camping hammock. But I think in this canyon hike, there really isn't going to be much to tie it to. And I think the small trees and one of the stops that we're going to make aren't going to be strong enough to support the weight. So I'm going to save that for something more like where, like an alpine hike or where I know there's going to be some big pine trees that can hold the weight of a hammock. So, okay, so I just got rid of probably another two pounds. So that's gone. Um, because it would be cool, but mm, do I really need it? I don't know. Uh, so this one right here, this is one of those Kaiser inflatables. Um, and I'm sure you guys have seen them, the things that you like, you know, hold the bag and fill it up with air and then you like twist it up and then it turns into like a big lounger bed slash raft or whatever you wanna use it for. Um, it's a little bit heavy, you know, I'd say it's a pound. Um, I'm gonna be willing to take the weight and me and my girlfriend even said we'd switch back and forth but I'm gonna definitely take the weight because in the canyon there might be spots that the water's pretty high and instead of actually carrying our packs over our heads or trudging our packs through the water um, if we're able to we're gonna try to fill it up and uh, put our packs on top of it and just float them across the water so I'm gonna carry it who knows what could happen I mean even if there's like a flash flood situation obviously like we wouldn't get out fast enough we would just die but like if the flash flood isn't that big or that fast and it's just a bunch of pooling water from rain it, it'll help us if we need it so I'm gonna bring it um poles Definite must on the poles because they're going to help stabilize me um, when I'm walking in the sand or when I'm walking in the water. Also, I don't think there's going to be much elevation on this hike, but they're great for elevation going up or going down, especially if you have a bad knee, and I have a really bad knee. So um, then I have my tent. I think me and my girlfriend are sharing a tent, so I think I can get rid of that as well. So that is going to get rid of a lot of weight. Um, but you always want to just try to find the lightest tent that you can for backpacking. This is the one that I have right now. I will eventually get a really lightweight one for backpacking trips to, you know, save my back and my legs. But for now, it's what I have. So if I was taking it, there's my tent. Um, your pack, obviously. And then these are stuff sacks. So I love stuff sacks. And I have a couple of friends who are backpackers, and they love them too. Um, they are waterproof, um, and you can smush them down and get the air out of it and really pack things tight so that you can organize them well on your bag. Um, they're color-coded, so then that way you know which bag holds what, so when you're pulling things out, it's easier. Um, also, when you stuff things inside of them and push out the air and roll them down, there's a little clip at the top, like raw hair and um, they it twists together and it clips together and it becomes like a loop so you can actually hang it which is perfect because for a lot of backpacking trips you really want to hang your food um, or anything with smells so that you don't attract animals um, and which I, I have rope for to hang my food um, I have also rope because there's going to be some rock crawling in this hike and in case we need to lower down packs or help each other in some way I have some a uh, little bit of length of rope um so anyway so stuff sacks highly highly suggest them waterproof the other thing you can um also do is if you run out of water and you need something to carry water you can actually use it to grab water now so where we're hiking is going to be really silty and lots of mud and um dust and dirt so if for some reason our filters fail if for some reason um anything happens where we're not able to collect water um, we can actually use these bags to scoop up the water and then put in like iodine tablets or purification tablets um, or even drink out of them with a life straw um, and just have the silt sink to the bottom after like a couple hours. It'll settle and it'll be easier to drink or to filter it. You can put it in there, let the silt settle and then filter the water. So just multi-purpose, really great. I highly suggest them, not very expensive. Um, and then you have your camelback. So I have my camelback so that as we're hiking, um, we're not forgetting to stay hydrated, and that's really important. So I have one of those. Um, behind it is a just basically a water reservoir. Um, it's an MSR water uh, reservoir bag. Thank you, Nicole. Um, it's a friend who gave, gave that to me. Um, but it's great. It holds about three liters, and then that way I can have the camelback and that. And so for you know a good 13-mile hike, I'm going to definitely not run out of water. I'm going to have a lot of water, and it'll be heavy, but um, it'll be there for me when I need it. Um, then you have, this is my day pack. The Copaxi is my day pack. That it, It's actually folded up into a little pouch, but if you undo it, it turns into a day pack. Um, just simple little day pack, nothing fancy, but it's so that when we set up camp, if we want to do some little exploring hikes, I have a little day pack to take with me. And it packs down really small and it's really light. Um, that Q core right there is my bed mat. Um, it rolls down really small. It's very lightweight. Um, it was a little pricey, but it was worth it because it helps save space and weight. Um, it's also insulated, so it makes it so the ground, the cold from the ground doesn't make my bed mat, the air in it cold. So that is a plus. 
Um, then I have my pillow, the little cocoon pillow. It's very small. Um, reference, here's my hand. Very small. So there you go. Um, and then the red pack right there is a sleeping bag liner. I get really, really cold. So even in like 30 degree weather, um, 40 degree weather, which it can be that in the desert because it gets colder at night. Um, my sleeping bag, it's, I think it's a 20 degree, but it just doesn't keep me warm enough. I really need to get a warmer sleeping bag. Um, so the sleeping bag liner just kind of makes it warmer by a couple of degrees and that'll really help me out. So I'm not cold. That is my sleeping bag with um, a stuff sack. Again, it's waterproof um, and it'll protect my bag from getting wet, but it's a um, compression bag. So that black strap on top of it, what that's going to do is it's like kind of full size right now, but I'm going to take that. Uh, that whole sleeping bag, smush it with my knee, get all the air out of it, and keep making it smaller. It's going to get to the size of almost like a football or a little bit bigger than a football, and you can compress all that down really tight. I just don't like to do it until right before I pack my pack because it does damage the down feather in your sleeping bag. So you want to try not to do that as much as possible, like just when you're backpacking. So compression sack, really great for sleeping bags. Makes it a lot smaller and uh, helps it up. So what else do I got? Okay, food. So these are your dehydrated meals. Um, if you're not into dehydrated meals and you're like a naturalist and you want to just bring granola, jerky, and some like tuna and whatever you want to eat, I mean, that's fine. I've kind of got addicted to these. I love them because when you're on a long backpacking trip and you're tired and, you know, you're just like, oh, you just want kind of some creature comfort. It's really nice to have a good warm meal. Um, so I love them. I like all brands. Um, I personally don't suggest Mountain House for anything other than the breakfast and the lasagna. I love the lasagna from Mountain House. Um, it's really good. The Some of the breakfasts are good. Um, the rest of it, ugh, not a fan. It's not really that good. So just a forewarning. Backpacker Pantry, have never had a problem with them. Really like them. Um, Alpine Air, um, really good. They have some good meals. So you can get these from REI or any backpacking camping store, and um, they're, they're great. Um, to eat these, you need something to boil water. So instead of carrying a camp stove, which is heavier, um, like a pot that you'd have to cook food in, I have a jet boil. So a jet boil is really nice. It's small. Um, it's lightweight, and it ha it's, you store the fuel in it and the little stand in it, and then you turn it on, and when it's working, um, it will boil your water within minutes. And then you get boiled water, you have a measuring table inside of it, and then you pour it into your dehydrated meal, and boom, there you go. You got some dinner, and that's awesome when you're exhausted. Um, my boots. Okay, so for Perea Canyon, you well, for all hikes and backpacking trips, you want a pair of really comfortable boots, something that isn't going to hurt your feet. Um, and I have a good pair of boots that I love that work really well for me. These are not them. I got these at an REI garage sale um, for like 20 bucks. And I'm going to use them because Perea Canyon and Gul uh, Buxton Gulch is going to ruin them. I'm going to be walking through mud and water. Um, and by the end of this hike, they're just going to be trashed. So I figured 20 bucks that works. I did get ankle length ones because what they suggested to me is everybody thinks sandals. But then you get like stones and pebbles in your feet and that hurts. Someone suggested running shoes, but the problem with that is sometimes you're walking on hard rock or the deserty, hard, like, ground surface, and that can hurt your feet, too, after a couple of miles, and so it's nice to have that support. And then sometimes you're walking through the canyon, and it's like sludge. It's like wet cement where you're, like, putting your foot in it and pulling it out. So they say the ankle-length boots are the best to have because then it won't pull your boot off because people have lost shoes, like, in this hike, and that would really suck. Um... And then I have a towel where I don't really see us. There's no, like, real lake or anything. But if we do find a creek or a riverbed or anything big enough to rinse off, it's nice to have a towel. Plus, we'll be trudging through some muddy waters. And so even if we take, like, a baby wipe bath, you know, or shower, wipe off bath kind of thing, you have a towel to kind of dry yourself off, too. So I always just sort of bring a towel. It's very, like, thin material, lightweight. It doesn't add a lot of weight to my pack. It just takes up a little space. But you have to fold it right. Um, then I have some granola mix that I make. And that's just a snack along the way. Um, this is one of my favorite things. Okay, so this is an espresso can. Um, Illy espresso, huh? Love it. It's good. And what I did was I learned from my backpacking book and I made it a multi-purpose kit. So I can clip this on the outside of my pack if I want to, if I run out of space. Um, this is just a little bit of cord or rope and I looped it. Here, let me do this so you guys can see it. And so I looped it so that it's tucked underneath the duct tape and so then that way it doesn't come out and it, it'll hold the weight of it um wrapped around it is duct tape and the duct tape oh duct tape is so handy when you need it for holes for repairing things for whatever just i really highly recommend having duct tape on backpacking trips or camping trips the top is a um like a, a medical grade silk 
bandaging tape. And so that's on top of there. And I just wrapped it around a bunch of layers. Of course, the outside layer is going to get really dirty and grody. But, you know, if you have an injury or something happens or you need to tape a finger or whatever or a toe, just take off the top layer and then just use the clean layers below it. So, okay, I'm going to put the phone down for a second so I can open it. Okay, inside I have, it looks compact and you're like, what the heck is in here? But I have two sandwich bags stuffed inside there, watertight um, Ziploc bags. And one is my first aid kit and it has the basic needs of first aid stuff that I would need. Band-aids, you know, um, just basic first aid stuff. And uh, moleskin, moleskin's in there, that's really important. And then on the bottom it says fire starters. I also, I don't know if fires are allowed in Perea Canyon or if we're even going to have a fire. But if it is, I have the supplies that I need in there to make a fire. Or if there's an emergency situation, we need to signal fire or we're freezing or we get lost, I have the ability to make fire in there. So that's a multi-purpose kit. It's light multi-uses. It's it's great. I love it. Um, baby wipes, muy importante. Um, dirty, ew, gr gross, sweaty, muddy. It's really nice to have baby wipes. Um, this is my creature comfort bag. So I get made fun of for this a lot by my guy friend who's a backpacker. But you know what? I'm willing to carry the weight because it has things in it that could really help you out, especially if you love backpacking, but you also like not feeling disgusting um, and smelly. And you're gonna get smelly anyway, but it just helps a little bit. There's um, one of my favorite things in here, I'll take this out, hold on, is this foam, sorry guys, just don't mind me while I'm opening things. Um, this foam I got from Cairn. It doesn't take up a lot of space, it's not heavy, but it's amazing, and when you're feeling super grody, uh, it smells great, um, it's just a foam, and you just kind of rub it on the funky areas, you know what I'm saying, and it just, you're like, nice, I feel like it took like a quick shower, that was awesome. Um, and so it just makes a difference on how you feel when you're hiking, I mean, that's this is if you want it or not. I have, um, I have a little baby deodorant in here, again, don't need, I know, girly, but I like having it. Um, I have a toothbrush in here, some toothpaste, some drops, some like eye drops or whatever, um, and you know, this again, just creature comfort stuff. You don't need it if you don't want it, if you want to be super rugged and whatever. But if you're like me, where you kind of just like to still feel nice on a backpacking trip, you can handle the weight. It's not that bad. Um, we already went over electronics, so I got that. This is like my little, um, extras bag. There's a patch in here for my sleeping mat there. This is a water purification thing that I got from Karen. Again, if we get an emergency situation, our filters break and we need to do that. Extra tissues. There's a heat blanket in there, emergency blanket. Things that do not take up much space and do not take up much weight, um, but they're important and they could help in a really bad situation. So I keep those. Um... These are little bags. They're just like little cosmetic bags that I got from the grocery store. I put them on the top flap of my bag because when you're in your hike, like when you get to your campsite, you can dig through your bag and like you have all this supplies, right? But when you're on your hike, you know, you're taking your pack off, you're putting your pack on, you know, you don't want to just, you don't want to be digging through everything all the time. So it just has the essentials of stuff that I may need along the hike itself. So there's some five-hour energy in there. There's um, some electrolyte tablets. Um... There's some sunscreen. I have, um, what is this? Um, Purell, you know, go to the bathroom, like whatever. Extra chapstick, extra tissues. Um, and then there's some, uh, uh, what do you call them? Bars in there. So quick snacks, you know what I mean? And you can get to everything really fast. Then I have extra, extra sunscreen. I'm going to bury that in my bag because I have the little one in my top bag, you know, for the easy access bag. But for later when I run out, I have those. Um, and then I have an ice pack and ace bandage. Okay, so for all you people, you're like, what the heck? I don't really need that. Um, you don't. I have really bad knees, um, and my knees swell up and, and get pretty bad. And so they call it chasing the inflammation. And so what I usually do is at the end of a long hike, at the summit, or um, just at the end of the hike, right before I, I camp, I will ice my knee and wrap it with an ace bandage. So weight that I'm willing to carry because it kind of saves my life. And I take a little I, a leave or ibuprofen, and that just makes it so the next day when I hike is not so brutal. Um, if you have arthritis or a bad knee or any injuries, um, it's not that bad. Just get one of those little popper ice packs and um, an ace bandage. You know, you do have to carry out your garbage, so just know you're still going to be carrying out that weight on the way out. So that's going to be something you have to deal with, but um, worth it, you know, to not have a knee that hurts. And then there's my kukuri. It was a gift from my friend. Um, really cool blade. It is quite heavy, um, so that's kind of a bummer to have to deal with the weight. Um, this is a kukuri. Uh, thank you, Brian. It was a very nice gift. 
But what it's great for is if we do get into an emergency situation or there is the ability to have fires on our hike, it's very heavy steel metal. Um, so you, it's great for chopping wood and you can put it on top and you can chop some good um, firewood with it. Um, uh, I guess self-defense. I mean, if there's animals or things like that around that you would need it. Um, it's just a really great knife. It's just uh, it's just heavy. So I have to carry that weight. So that's a bummer. But I want it. So I'm going to bring it. And this one could great. Uh, anyway. Okay. So and then there's clothes. So clothes I don't have packed up yet. And once I get them packed up, they will look much more organized. Um, I just have them divided by the day right now. So this is my pile of what I'm going to wear the day that I actually start hiking. Um, it's nice to set that aside because you know you have everything you need for your first day of hiking, but you're not going to put it in your pack. You're just wearing it. So that's ready to go. And then I have my second day um, all sorted out and third day also sorted out. And this is small because my first pair of pants from the first day will go on the third day. I know, gross. But, you know, that's what you got to do in backpacking. And then this is just stuff that I wear around the camp or at bed. Um bedtime because you just don't want to be in your sweaty clothes and if we're wet if we're muddy I mean you're just you don't want to be airing them out and like you know either putting them in a dirty clothes bag or like airing them out for the next time you use them or hike with them um for the next day um so I have comfy clothes that I wear like in my sleeping bag or in my tent or when we're sitting around the camp um, all of these will get compressed really tight because of those stuff sacks that I showed you. Um, I'll put them in a bag and I will compress the air out of it and squeeze it really small. And so it will not take up much room in my, um, my pack. But just, you know, be wary of when you're packing clothes. Like, just pack what you need, but also don't go so minimalistic that you're going to end up cold or you're going to end up hot or overexposed. Um, oh, I did forget one thing that's not sitting here right now, but I do have a scarf that I'm going to have because the last two days there's going to be sun exposure. Um, we're going to have no shade, and it's really important to cover your head or your skin. Um, it will just help so much with dehydration and sunburn. So I'm going to have one of those, um, a big scarf, so then that way I can kind of hang that over my head those last two days so we're not just baking in the sun. Um, that's pretty much it. I, uh, I think that's the basics. Oh, and this last one I forgot. I'm so sorry. This is important. So this sack right here um, is my light sources. So there's a flashlight in there. There is a, I call it, it's an aluminoodle, which is basically a thing you, you plug into an external charger and lace it inside your tent. And it's just like a little light inside your tent. It's really nice or at your camp or whatever. And it's lightweight. It's small. Um, my headlight is in there. And that is like muy importante. Like you really need to have a headlight. Um, very important. Flashlights are great, but when you're setting up camp or doing anything, if it's already gotten dark or you need to see, you know, you, you want your hands to be free. So just make sure you have a good headlight. Um, anyway, that was my crash course on backpacking. So um, there will be more. I am lacking a water filter. My girlfriend is bringing the water filter. That is something I've not gotten myself yet, so I will eventually. But I hope this has been helpful. Um, Mm, there will be more things that you need to bring on different hikes. Like, I, oh, actually, what's not here, too, is a down um, coat. I have a down puffy compressible coat. I'll bring that just in case it gets cold. And a rain jacket. Um, I'll have that, too. We hope it's not going to rain. But if it did, you know, then you have it and you're prepared. So, um, you know, when you're backpacking and when you're packing for a trip, non-car camping. Car camping is very different. You can bring a lot of different things. Just think temperature. Um, think, you know, dry, wet snowy, hot, you know, what you're going to be encountering and what you actually need and um, focus on weight and only take things that you are re basically willing to carry. So if you aren't willing to carry it and you don't need it for your own survival, I would, sorry, just don't mind my cat. I would, I would suggest not bringing it. Um, go through your, your stuff multiple times, make lists. I'm a list maker. And then that makes me, um, know that I haven't forgotten anything and that I have everything that I need for an emergency situation. Oh, uh, one last thing too that I did not mention that is in one of these bags. I think it's in this bag. It's a tiny little mirror, probably about this big, and it has a hole in it that you can look out um, as it's reflecting. It's an emergency mirror. I, I think it's really important to get one of those if you can put them in your pack because if you would get lost or something would happen and you see a helicopter over top or an airplane or anything like that, they can't see you. So a lot of times it's it's really important to have a small mirror that you can aim up towards the sun, look at it without blinding yourself. That's why the hole is in it. And then move it back and forth so you it reflects. It, it gives them a spotlight, basically, and then they can see you. So um, hmm, 
that's really it. I will definitely have more videos on packing. Uh, maybe I go to have a seat by falls in like a month. So I can show you guys my pack list for that and how I pack for that. Um, I hope it helps. Uh, comment, any questions, whatever, let me know. And, uh, um, again, I'm a baby backpacker, so do not judge me. I'm working on it, but for people who aren't experienced backpackers, I hope this has helped you. So, okay. All right. Well, have an awesome day and I'm going to go do Buckskin Gulch and Prairie Canyon. All right. Peace out.